this, these most important commandments. Shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Shall love your neighbor as yourself. The more I pondered on these things, the more I've lived with them, the more I've thought about them and tried, tried to live them, the more I realized, this is impossible. I can't love my neighbor as myself. I struggle to put up with my neighbor as much as, as anything. To love my neighbor as myself. And then to love God with everything? All that I am? I mean, I have great desire to do this. I might want to do this, but I know I don't. I'm thinking about, um, I forget the name of the rabbi, that uh, when he, this was back close to the time of Jesus, you know, so... 1900, 2000, 2100 years ago, whatever it was. And um, they were, the occupying uh, troops in Israel were basically saying, you can't teach Torah because that's spurring up dissension against, I think it was the Roman government. And so this rabbi was like, I, I, can't, I can't not teach Torah. I can't not teach this the law of Almighty God. And so he continued to teach and then he was arrested and um, ended up that they were then going to kill him by burning him on the pyre. And as he was burning, it came to the hour when they say the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Uh, and as he's burning, he starts to say this, uh, chant this, this beautiful call of Almighty God. And his disciples are there and saying, you're going to do this now as you're burning? And he says, my whole life, I've wondered what it meant to love God with all my soul. Now I know. And he died with a Shema on his lips. I was saying, yeah, I've got a long way to go. I've got a long way to go before I get to that point where I can say, yeah, I love God with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my heart. But if these are commandments of Almighty God, then in some way it must be possible. And as I've pondered and as I've prayed about this, I'm saying, okay, this must be possible with God's help. With God. And I think about St. Therese of Lisieux who said that um, how she wished she could give Almighty God all the love that he deserved. But she could not. And so she said, I will borrow Jesus' heart and his love to offer you that love. And so the love she offered to Almighty God was the love of Jesus, that perfect love, loving with the whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we think about it when we come to Mass, this is what we're doing, right? We don't have perfect thanksgiving. We don't have perfect worship. We don't have perfect love of Almighty God. But when we come to Mass, Jesus himself is offering himself to the Father. And we get to participate in it as church, as the body of Christ. And so it's not our own work. It's not our own merits. It's not our own uh, uh, being able to do all the good things and virtues and all that stuff. But rather, it's Christ that we then get taken up in. We get to participate in. So our little Thanksgiving, which is quite frankly pathetic, uh, is united to his perfect thanksgiving. Our little worship, which is distracted because we're thinking about where we have to go after this, and boy, Father's going on a really long time, and you know, these pews are really uncomfortable, or whatever it is that's going through our brain, is taken up with Jesus' perfect worship of the Father. And so, it's not far off for us to say, Jesus, I need to borrow your heart. Lend me your heart with which to love Almighty God as he deserves, as, he's, as 
is right for him as with a whole heart, mind, body, soul, strength. And also to borrow your heart, to love the people around me, because quite frankly, they drive me nuts. And I need your help, Lord. May it be your heart loving those around me. And your heart loving the Father.